What's up guys, it's Gabe back with another video and today's video will be very entertaining but very cringy at the same time. So before I started my journey on YouTube, I actually filmed a show with my grandma a few years back. I never posted it. You'll see why as we progress throughout this video. But before I get to that, I want to plug my merch. Head to teespring.com slash stores slash Gabe Curtis to cop the sick designs as well as a lot more. And if you follow me on social media or saw my community post a couple months back, you will have noticed I did release Christmas merch for the month of December. You know, now it's almost March, so that's obviously not available anymore. I didn't get a chance to tell you guys this, but I happen to have one more of my limited edition Christmas merchandise. It's a pretty sick design. It says, keep Christ in Christmas on the front. And then one of my favorite Bible verses from the book of Romans on the back. If you want to cop this, it's a green small hoodie. Comment down below and the first person who wants it, I will send it to you. Now, let's get to the video. The moment all of you have been waiting for, the show that I produced with my grandma for four years before I started YouTube. So, this show is called Blue Grandma and Gabe, and you may be asking yourself, why in tarnation is it called that? Well, a little inside into my life, ever since I was young, I called my grandma Blue Grandma because she had a blue car, just a weird thing that I did. But regardless, she still has that blue car to this day, and it caught on so much that not only I still call her that, even my parents and people that are close to me still call her that, which is kind of kind of funny, but I was like, okay, I'm starting this show, so I'm just gonna name it Blue Grandma and Gabe. Anyway, this first season was produced in 2014 and 2015, and it had zero plot. It was more of a boring vlog than a show. Back in elementary school, when the season was produced, my grandma used to pick me up every other day, and whenever we were bored, I just picked up my phone and started recording. That's what the first season looked like. There was really no editing involved. It was just me holding my camera at times or stacking it on random shelves since I didn't have a tripod. For season two, this was produced in 2016, 17, and 18. And this is when I started getting a little bit more on my creative side. I started introducing a plot and coming up with ideas with my mom, my dad, and my grandma to introduce the story better. This season is when I got a tripod and I actually started introducing a laugh track in there. And that laugh track is, oh my gosh, it's so awful. But I was trying to be more professional. But at the time, I thought it was the best thing ever. But looking back, you'll just see how cringy it is. And I also started introducing pair products. I'm talking pair phones, pair pads, pair books, pair desktops. The pair company is a parody of Apple which was introduced by Nickelodeon on their shows. And I grew up watching Nickelodeon, so that's why I started introducing the pair products into here. So it was kind of a spinoff of some Nickelodeon show, but at the same time, I just did whatever I wanted to do. And then my intro was my Disney Channel One ID. It's actually one of my first videos that I uploaded on this channel. It's what I used to introduce the show before it started. So if you're wondering what I was saying in the intro, I said Blue Grandma and Gabe. <laughs> Season three is when I got a little bit better at introducing characters and becoming a little bit more creative. And I replaced it with a different laugh track, which I like better, but it's still really annoying because I literally placed the laugh track at every part of the episode, even if it wasn't funny. This season was produced in August of 2018. As you know, I started filming Back to the Future 4 in October 2018. So this kind of editing style and this kind of acting is what you see in Back to the Future 4, but in that kind of showed you why Back to the Future 4 ended up being what it was because of what I did in the show with my grandma before I really started YouTube. <laughs> Um, and then obviously by Back to the Future 5, I learned that the way of filming and acting in these kind of things are not realistic and they're not the best quality. So that's why I 
increase the quality in Back to the Future 5, and I'm really happy with that. But regardless, that's kind of just an overview of everything here. Okay, so we'll start with Season 1, Episode 5, Fun Cool Tuesday. This was produced in February 2015. Oh, I like this little zoom up to the house. Hi, Bookham. So, hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because you were doing that. My gosh, I'm so small. My voice is so high. How was your day at school? Oh, what the heck are you doing? That voice crack though. This game right here is called Racco. My grandma and I used to play that all the time after school. And then we can catch it away and do whatever. Boop, boop, boop. What was that? Oh my gosh. Why am I so cringy? Just wait and see what happens next. I don't understand. How I had friends in elementary school. I was so weird. The son was from Spongebob. I literally cannot function. Look like how patient my grandma was. Keep in mind, my grandma sat through every single cringy thing I did as a child. And she was completely fine with being recorded half of the time. Yeah, we basically just dance for the rest of the episode, and then by the end of it, I turned on the news and just watched TV, and then I pretended that I was passing out or like falling asleep. And, and that's the end of the episode. Let's move on. This is season two, episode four, Back to the Future, and this is kind of the first installment of my Back to the Future obsession, and then I ended up going on producing Back to the Future 4 and Back to the Future 5. So you can kind of just see some cringy inspiration, but let's see what it looked like before I produced my movies. What did my Back to the Future episode look like? Well, look, at, look, how, look how on point I am. Yes. One thing I want to point out, look at the date, January 2019, 2018. Back to the Future 4 was January 29th, 2019. That was not intentional that was a complete coincidence that i ended up having back to the future 4 take place the same exact day just a year later than this episode and 105 p.m i think it was just like after 1 p.m on back to the future 4 too <laughs> i love how i have uh the tvg logo on the left trying to be all professional the time circuits that you see that i was typing into is on my kindle that is the same exact app and tablet that I used in Back to the Future 4 and Back to the Future 5 for my time pack. Just something to look at. But the Flux Capacitor <laughs> was not something we built. It was just an app that I got. And I mounted that behind the Kindle on another phone. We have a Flux Capacitor ready. And when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious stuff. you see some serious stuff. Because, you know, we're all PG. <laughs> I get the key stuck on the door. Yeah, I had one camera and just a tripod. Nobody was filming it. So every scene that I had to do, I always had to put the tripod somewhere and then go in front of it. There's my green screen. And this was the house that I lived at when I filmed Back to the Future 4 and Back to the Future 5. But before I did any like YouTube videos or movies that it had to do with the green screen, we filmed it there. But then that went up to my room. And now it's behind me in my studio since I've moved. Before I really understood that it was cringy once I got older, my main reason why I didn't post this publicly was because copyright. My theme song was Happy by Pharrell Williams for the first two seasons before I changed it to a non-copyright one for the third season. So that was kind of my excuse <laughs> uh, before I really was like, oh, I'm not going to post this. It's too cringy. But look, so... That cereal that my grandma's eating, it's puffins. We didn't want to have copyrighted objects. I don't know what that really has to do with this, but so I told her to have the cereal box facing the other way to, so you don't see puffins. But she says, Let me finish my puffin, I'll be right with you. <laughs> this is kind of funny. See, look, she like flips it and then she flips it the other way. I don't know why I told her to do that. They locked the door on my way out. Oh, that squeaky door. That squeaky door was present in Back to the Future 4, too, but I fixed it with uh, WD-40 before Back to the Future 5. I wanted to have the time circuits off, but in order to do that, I would have to press the button on the back of my Kindle, and I was pretending that the control center was down by the radio. So I just put a black square in front of it. First, you turn the time circuits on. That was such a bad edit. So this tells you <laughs> but yeah, this is basically the scene that I basically just stole from the original Back to the Future when Doc was telling Marty, 
how the time machine worked, but I put it into my own words. Oh my gosh, about, about to time to travel. This. We're about to do this. Wait, okay. what did I just do? <laughs> I was using the same theories Back to the Future. So we were doing 88 miles an hour, not 11,000 RPM. That wasn't invented until I actually started making more of my own content with Back to the Future 4 and 5. But anyway, it's not like we could show 88, but I wanted it to start from zero and go up to 88. So, but in order to do that, I had to tap where it says set to 88. Oh my gosh, look at that effect though. Great Scott, it's August 17th, Great 2016 Scott. at a precisely four August 17th, it's clearly not. Wow, looks kind of the same. And grandma's like, it looks the same. So the premise of this episode is my grandma and I went back in time a few years to just observe us. I mean, there's really no like absolute reason we had to, like, you know, Back to Future 4 and 5, where there was an actual conflict, but we were like, all right, we just want to see ourselves back in the day. Anyway, but these episodes were actually from the past. So this was season two, episode one, winning the lottery back in August, 2016, I produced this episode. So it was actually kind of cool editing my old episodes into a new episode. The way it looks is pretty awful because again, we were filming in front of that green screen down the stairs and we had no lighting. Hey, Grandma, that was us a year and a half ago. That's hard to believe. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the worst laugh track in this entire series. That was the first part of season two when I introduced the laugh track, but it was the most annoying thing ever. Because your voice has changed. Oh, I know. You used to talk up here all the time. No, it's just uh, my voice. I love how we have two different laugh tracks overlaid it because it's not like I saved these individual scenes. So I had to go on the episode I produced that's edited, has laugh tracks in, screen record it with audio, and then put it behind the green screen when I was editing. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I can't believe we it. We can't let them see us. Oh, no. Yeah. I just love how my grandma's played along with it, but I love her, like, sarcastic comments. I don't know what the logic I was introducing, because obviously we're right in front of them. In this universe, if we time travel, are we invisible to them? A complete paradox? Yes. <laughs> okay. Dr. Emmett Brown's words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. No, 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 no. No, look, look, look behind there. In the early stages of this series I did with my grandma, for some reason, every single time that we mentioned the time or there was a countdown that we were anticipating in the episode, I always put the text in the right corner that says what we're saying. I don't know why I did that, but you can see it's not, it's, it's the edited episode and we're just overlaying it. Look, see, there's my pair book right there that I introduced in season two. All right, so this is when we win the lottery in the episode that we're looking back on basically. And I just love how this is produced. So again, my grandma's head is cut off. I don't know, in this cut scene, we all of a sudden cut to it without even moving. I don't know what I was doing in these days. The actual episode itself, not this Back to the Future episode, but the winning the lottery episode in 2016, I didn't know how to like green screen the TV so I could just put the video on it. So you can see me going to the source on my smart TV, switching it to USB because I plugged in my flash drive, which had the lottery video on it. <laughs> oh, you could just see it happening. Like, why didn't I at least cut it? I could have figured out a way to not show that. I'm going on my folder with my USB drive. Let's click it. Let's go on the news. Look, see, three, two, one. That's what I used to do. And I just love how it's overlaid. That's me. That's me in 2016. There in the TV, I called myself Paul Johnson, the lottery ticket teller. That's not even an official name, but all right. Apparently this is how people <laughs> announce lottery numbers. This is on your local news station. You're at the city hall and the, this random guy with a hat and sunglasses <laughs> on inside <laughs> says what the lottery numbers are. But as you can see that I was filming that in my room, just a weird, just a weird concept. You can barely hear me on the TV too. I don't know what editing I was doing. You hear that laugh track though? Literally, 
the guy or me on the TV is like, whoever won this lottery ticket, I'm so happy for you. And my grandma in the original episode that we're looking back on says, thank you. And there's a laugh track. My sense of humor is awful. There's the text where it says we won the lottery. Look at me dancing around the room right there. See, I like, I like run around and then I go behind the camera because the original phone that I filmed on had a time limit. So I always did that without cutting the actual scene. I always went behind the camera to see if it was still recording. We gotta get out of here before we, you know, make a complete paradox. Let's like sneak. Which way should we go? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna go into the wall. In this episode, the green screen that we're filming in is right against that wall by the door, like behind where my past self is standing. So we would, naturally we would go this way because that's, I mean, I mean that's the way we came from but since i had that weird cut scene now that's the wall so look look how we walk out oh right. let's whoa okay well that that had some effect that i did there <laughs> oh my gosh okay I mean, this is even worse i mean i guess you could argue is like okay if this is a universe where we're kind of invisible to the actual people maybe but it's like the <laughs> The way this was set up, the lighting was awful. I mean, keep in mind, we were filming downstairs on the wall. We had a skylight above us, no actual artificial lighting. Um, so that's why it looks so bad. I'm not going to show too much of this one because, you know, I already showed kind of the premise of this episode. But I want to tell you something, you know, I thought we were, like I was talking about before, like how we were like invisible. Hi. What? Why are we saying hi to them and then we jump down? If we're invisible. Oh, there's me dancing around the room again, playing Spongebob music. Let's just skip past that. I don't know what we're doing here. Why am I dabbing? That's just no. But, you know, we can't see what we're looking at. So we're just pretending we're watching what we're not watching. So I just say the randomest things when it has no context whatsoever. I don't know why I randomly started laughing, but you can see my grandma is making fun of that first laugh track that we used. I'm the audience. It's just kind of funny how that timed kind of like that. Like I started be like, be quiet. We can't make a paradox. And then that's right when the grandma in the past that we're looking at just looks kind of in the camera's direction and says, hello, we're back in the future. So that was the premise of that episode. <laughs> so season three, episode one, Arrested Part One. This is when we were kind of going off a parody of Sam and Cat, which was a spinoff of Victorious and iCarly on Nickelodeon. So let's just kind of see what we have in store. The editing is better here. It's not as random, but it's still very cringy. And this is kind of the equivalent, in my opinion, to Back to the Future 4. It kind of just set up the quality. DVG, you know? And this drone footage is not mine. Well, that was a successful day at the hair store. I'm really hoping the grandma will like this new hair phone I got here. I'm really hoping she'll like it since she doesn't have one. I'm talking to myself. Again, that just set up Back to the Future 4 right there. That's what I was used to, like, when I was acting and everything. And, like, the placement of the camera and when I was editing. I was talking about how I got my grandma a new pair phone. I actually got that from Randy56 on Etsy.com. I still have a lot of his pair products. Very nostalgic for me since I grew up watching those on Nickelodeon. This is my intro. Da 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 da. Staring Gabe Curtis, really? I, I cannot spell starring for some reason. Graham and Gabe interrupt this program to bring you this breaking news. It was all caught on camera. It was all caught on camera, but we're not going to show you it. Well, that was you. Don't deny it. That was you. It had a little license plate number. Yo, my grandma stole. What the heck? She's wearing the evidence. Hopefully the uh, lighting is better. As you can see behind me, it's gone significantly darker outside as the sun has been setting. I've been recording for a little while now. <laughs> Um, so I just adjusted my green light, and it should be better now. So I'm, I'm going to try to sneak back in front of Mary's of Return of You can't be Nobody there. Nobody will ever notice a young man wearing a million dollars worth of jewelry. No, I'm going to pick my pocket. I'm not going to wear it. Aww. <laughs> uh, blue grandma? That's a police car right there. Oh my god. Go He's coming. Go upstairs. Go up. And there's my dad playing the police officer. Nice little guest star. My name is Officer Tough Love, and I'm a search warrant, actually, to... 
search this house. Does Gail Johnson live here? No, she does not. So basically, my dad playing a police officer just searches our house. <laughs> this is a great shot right here. Yeah, top notch quality. Oh, look at that, my great. You can if you can kind of see, my grandma is the one who's recording. You can see her in the mirror from the bathroom. Anyway, he just continues to search the house and he doesn't find her at all. You can see my tripod <laughs> right there. So he looks right at the camera and then leaves. <laughs> okay, um, so this next part, you know, my grandma comes back from her hiding spot and we're just praying that the police officer doesn't come back and let's see what happens. Get outside, oh my, no. What, no? He's pulling up in his police car right now. No. So our strategy is to be really quiet, and for some reason that will prevent him coming into our house. WPD, we have every right to believe and witnesses that you took a million dollars worth of jewelry from Fred Meyer. So we can go peacefully, I'll cuff you, and then... Is that the hard way the or the easy way? That's the easy way. Okay. Hard way is I have to take you by force. So I don't want to do that, ma'am. You look closely, and you're a big Nickelodeon fan. That's Cat Valentine's paraphone right there. And I think my grandma's is Sam Puckett's paraphone, and then my paraphone is just the basic blue one. But look, look at me. I just cannot stop laughing. I'm not gonna let you take my grandmother to prison. You don't have a choice. There, there she goes, off to prison. See how I try to block this. Okay. So open the door. Thank you. Go in. Peacefully helps quite a bit. Thank you, sir. To be continued. <laughs> Crap, what am I gonna do? So in part two, um, I break my grandma out of jail. <laughs> yep, there's my grandma playing just the front desk person at the prison. Why did I think this is what prison looks like? What? Oh my gosh, yeah, this is definitely prison. Hello, good afternoon. How may I help good you? Good afternoon, I wanna uh, visit my grandmother. Oh, excuse me. In the, in the context behind that, in the episode, I have an app where you can program calls, so when I did that little movement, I was like tapping my phone to call her. Okay, no, I'll find somebody to cover me and I'll be there as soon as possible. Thanks for calling. My apologies, I have a emergency. My grandma is looking straight and I'm looking like the other way. Okay, so why would the keys to the prison cells be mounted on the front desk? Does that make any sense? No, it does not. Oh, that's me walking down the prison aisle? That makes no sense. That looks awful. Are you gonna get me out yes. here? Oh, I love that. Oh, that's just great. So, you know, we were filming in front of our green screen and then I got another green screen effect off of YouTube that I downloaded, which was like a prison cell that opened. But as you can see, I didn't have two different layers. I only had one layer, which means it wasn't realistic when I was opening the prison cell. I was behind the cell. And obviously it's not like it would look realistic even if I figured that issue out because that was our house keys. What, what did I expect to get out of this? My grandma did something illegal. She went to prison. So then I did something more illegal. I broke her out of prison. And that was the last episode in the series that we produced. That was the ending to Blue Grandma and Gabe. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Did you guys cringe as much as I did? If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you have any suggestions for future videos, you can comment that in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific for a brand new video. Be sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah.